So anyone who was watching this debate expected to see some type of clash between Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg, and there were fireworks, but I mean, Pete Buttigieg, you can tell, was a little bit apprehensive about really going directly after Bernie Sanders. He did, but Bernie Sanders was the one who decided to drag him, and he dragged him for being basically the errand boy of elites. And he once again called out Pete Buttigieg for uh, begging rich people for money and having 40 billionaire donors. This was absolutely golden. Unlike some of the folks up here, I don't have 40 billionaires, Pete, contributing to my campaign. Coming from the pharmaceutical industry, coming from Wall Street and all the big money interests, what we do have is we have now over 6 million contributions from one and a half million people averaging $18.50 a contribution. That is unprecedented in the history of American politics. If we want to change America, you're not going to do it by electing candidates who are going out to rich people's homes begging for money. The way we're going to do it is build a mass movement of working people who are prepared to stand up, not take money from these billionaires, not take money from Wall Street, but stand up to the drug companies in Wall Street. And if you want to be part of that political revolution, BernieSanders.com. Get his ass, Bernie. <laughs> That was absolutely phenomenal. Like, the reason why nothing gets done is because all of these politicians, they take money from special interests, from billionaires, from large multinational corporations, and then they get elected and they do the bidding of the donors that help them get into office. So, Americans recognize that there's too much money in politics. Like, this is an issue that even the least astute political observer will be able to see. So what Bernie Sanders is doing is he's drawing attention to this conflict of interest. Like, Pete Buttigieg has raised money from every single industry in the country, basically, in the world. So for him to basically try to try to play that off as, oh, well, I have momentum, I'm raising money. No, you're being propped up by elites because you're selling out. Like, you're changing your position as a result of these financial contributions. Let's remember, when Pete Buttigieg entered this race, he supported Medicare for All, but then he starts taking money from Big Pharma, and guess what? He changes his position to accommodate them and probably farm more donations from them. So this individual is a fraud. He is the 2020 version of Hillary Clinton. So in the event he were to go up against Donald Trump, what is Donald Trump going to do? He's going to weaponize that corruption. Now, of course, Donald Trump is corrupt as well, but Donald Trump... He is going to run to the left of Pete Buttigieg, and he's going to try to position himself as an anti-establishment candidate, and guess what? It's going to land. Nobody's going to take Pete seriously. These types of focus group driven, you know, poll minded rehearsed politicians who thumb point, that's not going to work. In an anti-establishment era, you have got to make sure that you communicate to people that you are aware of the issues that they have. One of the main issues money in politics. It's making you out of touch. Uh, it's making all politicians out of touch. And I think that Pete Buttigieg, as much as he wants to, you know, bemoan this DC establishment, you're part of that, buddy. You're part of the problem by selling out. Now, the best part about all of this is that when Bernie Sanders called him out, Pete Buttigieg had no idea how to respond. And it really further demonstrates why he's incapable of being, you know, a nominee who can take on Donald Trump. Because you have to be able to absorb blows. You have to be able to withstand even a little bit of attacks. But Pete Buttigieg had no defense. This is what he said. We are going into the fight of our lives. Donald Trump, according to news reports, and his allies raised $25 million today. We need to go into that fight with everything that we've got. Now, I've been very clear on both my record where I have sued pharmaceutical companies and what I'm campaigning for that includes raising wages and raising taxes on corporations and the wealthy. And as the only person on this stage who is not a millionaire or a billionaire, I know a thing or two about building a movement because mayor of South Bend, Indiana is not exactly an establishment fundraising powerhouse. We are here. We are here without the involvement of any corporate PACs because hundreds of thousands of people went to, yes, PeteForAmerica.com 
contributed to this campaign. And let me say something else. If we want to bring about any of the changes that everyone is talking about so elegantly up here, we need to put together the majority that can decisively defeat Donald Trump. And in order to do that, we need a politics that is defined not by who we reject, but how we bring everybody into the fold. And if you are low income or if you're able to contribute a lot, if you've always voted Democrat or if you're an independent or even a Republican who's just sick of looking your kids in the eye and trying to explain this White House, we need you to join us right now. I will not pursue politics by telling people they can't be at our side if they're not with us 100% of the time. This is a time for addition, not rejection, for belonging, not exclusion. That was terrible. I mean, contrast that with Bernie Sanders. When he talks about building a coalition to take on Donald Trump, who does he cite? He cites non-voters, disaffected voters, the working class, people of color, women, young people. But Pete Buttigieg is literally basically saying, well, you know, billionaires have to be included as well. What about billionaires? You can't exclude them. Will somebody think of the billionaires? Like, I don't know what he's thinking. Do you honestly believe this is going to land with anyone? Who believes that people are going to give you a pass if you explain that? I mean, Jonathan Chait does because online he said, you know, I kind of like this idea of Pete Buttigieg, you know, taking as much money as possible. I'm paraphrasing in order to beat Donald Trump. Except once again, look at what happened in 2016. Hillary Clinton outraised Trump by what, a two to one margin? And she still lost. So voters will see right through you. If you sell them out, Pete Buttigieg has gone above and beyond. He's already appointing people, former Goldman Sachs executives, to his campaign. So he is one of the biggest sellouts in America. One of the worst politicians on that stage. He may be worse than Biden. Like, after this week, what he's tried to do and all of the policies, like, we're finding out that his Medicare for All Who Wanted isn't just a straightforward public option. It's worse than that. Like, he may be worse than Joe Biden. He may be the worst person on that stage. So, I mean, th this defense was absolutely horrible. It showed that he doesn't know how to read the room. He doesn't realize that we're in this anti-establishment era, but it was great because it showed, you know, the people who were tuning in to see, ooh, who, you know, who's this Pete Buttigieg and Bernie Sanders who just came out of Iowa on top? Like, it showed people that one of them is serious and one of them is an inexperienced clown who is not substantive at all. Like, whenever Pete Buttigieg talked, it was very difficult to pay attention and it's not just because i don't want to look at his ratty fucking face but it's because what he's saying is meaningless it's platitudes it's hollow he says a lot of words like noise comes out of his mouth but there's no meaning to anything that he says it's all just rehearsed scripted lines and it's it's astonishing to me that he hasn't learned from hillary clinton like he still thinks that this if you can emulate obama then you're gonna do a great job except you can't emulate Obama. Obama had something that Pete Buttigieg lacks, and that is charisma. Now, don't get me wrong, Pete Buttigieg is relatively charismatic, but the problem with Pete Buttigieg is that he's so fake. Like, Obama had a way of delivering lines more smoothly, so even though they were platitudes and rehearsed, he still made it seem like he was authentic. Pete Buttigieg lacks all of that authenticity as much as he wants to be the next Obama. So, I mean, this was great for Bernie to call out Pete Buttigieg's uh, billionaires. He did it this morning as well. You have to keep hammering this point home. Make people realize that Pete Buttigieg is the candidate of billionaires. And, you know, you don't even really have to do that much because he doesn't have a real path to the nomination at this point in time. But make sure people know he is the errand boy of elites and he will serve no one but his donors if he's elected. Beta male, not a beta male.